Hello there and welcome to the new Power BI tutorial and in this tutorial I will going to show you how you can create the waterfall chart. But first of all what is waterfall chart and how it looks like. So I will show you in second and just a quick information that this sheet is present within the description. So if you want to search any of the tutorial you can get it from the description and even share it if you feel like it, it will going to help your colleagues and friends who are learning the Power BI. Now let's go to the Power BI and see what waterfall charts really looks like. So here is a quick example of how the waterfall chart really looks like. So what it is showing you is basically the 2009 and then 2010 and then 2011 and 2012. And here from 2009 to 2010 there is a transition that has happened so the value of sales within the 2009 was 4.2 million but in 2010 it has reduced to 3.5 million so the general question is where the sales has come down and that's what it tries to answer that sales has gone down into the office supplies over here then furniture and then here in the technology and that's why what you are seeing is the lower sales over here so this is the very good information which it shows uh, as a breakup of information as to how the transition has happened or what are those factors which is contributing into the resulting part and from 2010 to 2011 there is a slight increment into the furniture there is the uh, down, there is a drop in top technology and there is a drop in office supplies and then if you will see from 2011 to 2012 two categories office supplies and technologies is basically growing up however the furniture is going down so a very detailed and very uh, you know information which usually resulting into a question as to what categories are contributing into these uh, this sale or what category is going up or what category is going down is something very useful with the help of this chart from the visualization perspective so how we can create this chart so first of all what i'll do is i will just delete it and if you will see the waterfall chart is present over here and if i just expand it and expand a little bit up here uh, you will see that it is asking for some information for example, the category, category, and then the breakdown. So category is nothing but your x-axis. So maybe what we can do is add the order date. And I will just keep the year information. And then the breakdown. Breakdown should be based on the product category. So what I'll do is I'll add the product category. And then the values. Values, let's take the sum. And if you will see, now the chart is very similar. However, little different from what I showed because there is some formatting which I have done here in this chart so that it will look like a good one because if you will see in 2011 it shows the 3.4 million as the sale however the bar is not that high so what you can do is come over here in the formatting and here we have this y-axis as uh, one of the axis over here and if you will see uh, down there uh, what is the start position what is the end position right so what we can say maybe the start position is um, maybe 2 million or 1 million so if i say 1 million 1 2 3 4 5 6 uh, maybe one more nope i guess 6 that doesn't look good so what i'll do is again change it to 2 maybe if if this is not making a lot of sense, you can do it three. Yeah, this looks fine because this is very much similar to what I had. So you can go into the Y axis. You can make the end as auto uh, just so that uh, Power BI determines where it needs to end. However, you have the option of changing it to uh, three million over here. And that way your bars will be clearly shown uh, on the axis. Apart from that, you can see that uh, there are there is this option of having the grid lines or don't have the grid lines and how much de decimal value you, you want. Apart from this, data labels are off, but you can enable it. And in the data labels, you can even choose the display unit, which I suggest in this scenario, 
should be in thousand as to indicate how much sales in dollars one thirty five thousand dollar or two twenty thousand dollar that has gone up or down but uh, as you can see apart from this you have the color option you have uh, orientation position option where you want to position it let's say you want to position inside and so that's how you can get it but this is more around playing around or it's about how your organization basically wants you to create a chart like this uh, which clearly dictates about where the labels should be present uh, what position it should have what fonts it should have what size it should have so all of this option is present over here and it has the option of showing the background however i suggest don't show it because i like uh, as per my preference, you know, uh, personal preference, I like very less clutter uh, and more visual uh, visual presentation on this. However, if you also have, uh, if you see, you also have the sentiment colors, which is very specific to the waterfall chart over here, because sometimes increase can uh, have the negative effect. So in that case, you may want to show it into a red. And I'll give you a question. Let's say you are setting an interview and uh, your interviewer is asking, okay, can you tell me one scenario where negative, where increase is, will result into the, uh, into a red? Well, in that case, um, take a pause and think about the scenario, what answer you will going to give if very quickly you need to provide an answer. Um, and I hope you must have got it by pausing the video. But if you have not, then I'll give you two scenarios. One is the um, discount. If the discount is going up, then it is red. As well as if expense is going above the budget, then also it is red. So you can basically control all of these from here uh, and then make the relevant changes. But for now, red indicate uh, absolutely fine. Green indicate absolutely fine. So I'm, I'm fine with that. Also, the total total is nothing but these bars. So if we don't want user to think like this is green, that means it is positive, then we can change this to something which has no impact like gray in this case, right? If you don't like gray or if your organization has a different color coding altogether, like for example, this chart or this color, then you can change it. But this is something very important. That's why I wanted to show you that uh, total is something you can change it. And however, it should not be green or red, which is this color, which is more like a sentiment color in this scenario. But that's about it. Uh, uh, there is an option of breakdown. Let me see how many breakdowns. So maximum is like three breakdown, which has been given by default. We have these three categories. That's why the three breakdown is given. I will just keep it default. I will not change it because that will unnecessarily make the chart complex and may have some issues on the runtime. But apart from that, rest of the other option is very straightforward about what should be the title, what should be the background, border, lock aspect, shadow, tooltip, and visual header. I will leave it up to you. But if you have any question, you can let me know and I'll, I'll answer that. So that's about it. And I'll meet you in the next topic.